Okay, so um, this is uh, building semantic content models in Drupal 8. Um, uh, this is um, Stefan Korlosket. I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Stefan Korlosket, score on Drupal.org. I've been a long time contributor to the Drupal project uh, in both core and contrib. Uh, in the realm of semantic web, RDF, RDFA, schema.org. And I also happen to be a member of the security team. And I work for Acquia. We both work for Acquia. So, and my name is Kevin O'Leary. I'm the director of design uh, at Acquia um, on the Octo team. Um, I, you might have seen designs that I've made, like the Drupal 8 toolbar, edit in place, WYSIWYG, responsive preview, several other Acquia products as well. Um, and uh, Score and I have been working together for a while on uh, uh, collaborating on these, um, you know, uh, problems around content modeling and and uh, and uh, and uh, semantic content and linked data, and kind of bringing together the two worlds of UX and uh, you know and linked data and schema.org. So this is a, this is a quote from Oliver Wendell Holmes, which I thought was really interesting. It's not really about um, semantic content or about the internet or or, or, or any of that, but I thought it was really fascinating in, in, in relation to what we're talking about because it's about thinking in things, you know, and that's essentially really what um, what schema and, uh, and, and RDF and, and semantic is all about. It's about attaching the meanings to the things and making sure that they that they are that they are not lost, and that we always are rooted and grounded in the sort of in the in the realities of what people are actually doing and, and what their real needs are, and that we don't sort of let the language get pulled apart from or separated from either physically, you know, or, uh, or semantically from, from what, its, what its true meanings are. So um, um, with that, um, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, content modeling in the semantic web. So these two worlds, I don't know, how many people saw Nas Urbina's um, presentation yesterday? Okay, so, so a lot of you saw it. That was Nas made an, a really awesome, um, you know, presentation about, you know, about the, the way that this whole world is changing. And I think, you know, one of the overarching things that we saw in his presentation is this sort of um, this overlap and sort of marriage, in a sense, of of of, of content, uh, content strategy, content modeling, and uh, semantic web and linked data. So, um, you know, what we're hoping to do is to try to take that further and to talk a little bit more about how we do this with Drupal. So, um, so we're going to talk about uh, kind of two main uh, buckets. Uh, the first one is semantic content model creation, um, and then uh, the second one is semantic content creation. So on the one hand we're, hand, we're talking about essentially kind of field UI-ish kind of stuff, and the other hand, it's kind of when you're in the WYSIWYG, when you're, when you're inside of the body field. Um, so uh, Stefan is going to talk a little bit about um, the history of, of, of the projects that we've been working on and, you know, some of the things that, that we've accomplished uh, with that. So you might have seen uh, the video that Dries projected back, uh, I think it was in Austin, in his keynote. This was Guha giving his stake on schema.org and the adoption of schema.org by Drupal. So just to recap what happened here before is uh, when we started to work on Drupal 8, schema.org was launched in 2011. That's a few years back already. And we decided this, this was the future. We realized that that was the future of the semantic web and how you annotate your structured content that you publish on the web. So search engines were behind this initiative, so we thought we definitely have to adopt this standard schema.org. And Guha is the creator of the schema.org initiative. He works for Google, and we had an interview with him that was that's on YouTube, so we'll have the link in the slides if you want to watch it later. But most of you might have seen it already in, in Dries' keynote. So schema.org, it's, it's like a dictionary or a schema to tell you what terms and how to express your content, but it doesn't tell you what format to use, so you have to pick a format. What we use in Drupal 8, and we've been using that format in Drupal 7 as well, it's called RDFA, and it's additional attributes that you add to your HTML output that tell search engines how to understand your HTML, how to break it down, what type of 
content that it describes, is it an event or is it a news article, and then all the values inside it, what, what are those? Are those dates or are those people, authors? So this is describing uh, your content really well to search engines, and then they can pick those up and display your pages as rich snippets and make them more attractive on search engine result pages. This is an example of an offer from using the schema.org uh, vocabulary, and it's got a name, a price, for, for, for example. This is another offer a bit more detailed. It has reviews, uh, only one here for the sake of simplicity. Uh, review uh, rating, best rating, etc. how many, how many uh, rating it got. And schema.org has a lot more types and properties than just reviews and, and offers. It covers a very wide range of topics that most of you probably need on their site, and most people need on their site. So like recipes, uh, books, news articles, physical items like places, location, countries, offices, buildings, like government buildings, public buildings. So any, anything that people publish on the web and anything that Google is interested in understanding and surfacing in the search results. In Drupal 7, we, we didn't launch Drupal 7 with schema.org support simply because the launch of Drupal 7 happened way before, Drupal, uh, before schema.org was launched. But uh, we, we still managed to backport some of those or to integrate some of those vocabularies from schema.org uh, using contrib, using a few contrib modules. So the first module is, is called schema.org, and there's a dis distribution called schema.org kickstart. But this provides you with the UI where you can go and map your existing fields and existing content types to schema.org types and properties. So if you have lots of content on your site but you don't have those mappings, you can go and install those modules and have the mappings out of the box for all the content that you have on your site if you map things properly. And we also have another member of the community who built a module called Entity Field Builder, and that, that was a, a nice initiative from his part uh, to come up with um, to come up with an in interface allowing you to spin up and instantiate content types from scratch reading the definitions on schema.org. So say you wanna, you're want you starting a new site, you want to have events on your site. Instead of going and clicking around and creating every field after creating your event content type, you can instead go in, in, in this interface and say, I want an event content type on my site. I don't have anything yet. Please just create me an event content type with all the relevant fields and all the choose the field types for me, et cetera, et cetera. So that was a very... Um, bold uh, idea, but it, it's a great idea, we think. So we built on that, and we have a demo of what's working for Drupal 8 uh, coming up in a little bit. So, um, so on, the, uh, you know, on, the, on the other end of the spectrum, you know, we saw, we've seen over the last few years, this is a diagram from, uh, from Karen McGrain uh, from, from the MPR content model. Um, we, we see this sort of the world of, 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 of content modeling you know, coming into play at the same time, and 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 over the last sort sort of five or six years, this has really sort of exploded into a whole a whole new um, uh, a whole uh, real world of content modeling for the web. And uh, basically, the, the the central idea is this idea of content uh, uh, create once, publish everywhere, which is quite similar in a sense to the to, to the dry concept of of uh, don't repeat yourself. Um, that we have in, uh, you know, in, in, in development, and uh, you know, you, what you really want uh, is you want each atomic piece of content to have only one canonical version. So that if I have, uh, you know, if I have an author or a name or a or a place or you know any individual piece of content, that that exists one place and can be updated one time, and that that will, um, you know, then flow out to all of the, um, you know, all of the places to which it's linked. Um, so uh, having these, um, you know, having these well-described and well-structured, um, you know, content models that Drupal enable, enables us to do is a real sort of accelerator for this, right? So um, Stefan is now going to show you a little bit of how, um, 
you know, the semantic uh, content model creation uh, happens in Drupal 8. Um, but essentially what we're, what we're talking about is, you know, these, like I said before, we have these two, these two personas. On the one side, you have the site owner, uh, or uh, this could be a sort of an, an editor or a site owner or a site builder. But essentially, it's the person who is responsible for modeling the content, for, 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 creating, for creating the content model and then, you know, making it a reality in the site. Uh, and then on the, other high, on, on the other side, we have the content author, and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit later on, and there's all, some interesting modules that have been, uh, that, you know, we've been working on for that. But on the site owner side, um, you know, this, this is a busy individual who has lots of things that they have to do in their day and lots of sort of m management responsibilities. So what, what we want to do is really kind of uh, make things much more efficient for them. You know, they don't want their time wasted, and in fact, Currently in Drupal, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, the things that we, we do take a lot of time and there are a lot of sort of excessive numbers of steps and UIs that you have to go through to do things. And one of the things that we realized is that if we can, if we can save people time in the content uh, modeling and content sort of uh, content model creation, um, but have the RDFA sort of built into that process, then, then the link data com becomes almost automatic. And that's really kind of the, uh, the underlying goal of this. So, um, you know, so people don't have to think about the RDF. They, they found a good place that they can get an easy way to create a content model, and, and then the RDF comes along with it for free. So um, Stefan is going to um, get into uh, a little bit of this, um, this, this problem space. And, you know, essentially, the, the first problem is when I create an entity, I want to start with sane defaults, right? Um, and uh, the, the second problem is, you know, I want, to, I want maybe a whole content model, essentially. More simply, give me a semantic, a semantic entity template and then give me a semantic entire content model template. So we're going to talk about the first one first, which is what we've really worked on. And um, uh, so this is the Drupal 8 RDF UI. You want to? Yeah, we have a video, video for this. <clears throat> uh, I want the pointer. Well, we had a video. <laughs> um, devices. Oh, I think it's here. Where? It's uh, close, too close. Code. Right. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is all work that has been done, sorry, this is uh, what I'm going to show here, the videos I'm going to show is actually done, has been done by a, a student from uh, the Google Summer of Code over, over a period of two years. So the first video was done last, last year's summer, 2014, and, and uh, so this is, this is it starting here. So we're going to skip this step here. Okay, so she's installed all the modules, etc., and creating she's creating a a content type. In this case, it's of type person, and we can see here as you create your new content type, you can map it directly to what it corresponds to on schema.org using uh, autocomplete. Save your content type. And just to show you, um, there is this is equivalent to the person on schema.org. And there's more, there's a lot of properties that belongs to a person, a lot of properties you can have for a person, such as the age, date, age, date of birth, friends, name, first name, etc. 
So there's, here we pick affiliation. We create a field for the affiliation of a person in Drupal just using the regular field UI. And in, in the settings of the field, at the very bottom of the form, we just click save. So we, we just continue doing, doing this. In the Drupal 7 version, we had a, we had a slightly different workflow. So here, you just create all of your fields, and then you go to a separate page dedicated to the mappings of your content, of your content type. So it's called RDF mapping. And, there's a, and this is, by the way, this is Drupal 8. I just want to remind you. There is an equivalent module for Drupal 7 as well. The UI is slightly different, but this is the newer, newer version. So we, we have the list of all the fields that we have in the person co content type, body, affiliation, job title. And we are going to map those fields, which so far were just local fields, and Google has no idea what, what they mean. We will map them to something meaningful that Google will understand based on the schema.org vocabulary and definition. So body, body will map to description. Those, those values, by the way, in the dropdown are all coming from schema.org. So you, you know that if you pick one of those, you, you got it right. There's no chance for typo here. Job title. So now we save the form. Everything is set. And if we go and create content of that content type, I'm just going to skip that step here. We can look at the markup. So this is the normal page, the page that Google will see when it crawls the site. And I don't know if you, if you can see here well, but there are some, um, some specific attributes that were added, such as uh, schema affiliation. I don't know if you can read here. But this is the mapping we chose in the UI. So all of a sudden, all of your markup will have those additional attributes, which are really useful for Google and any search engines to understand your content and pick out the values that they like and they want to reuse, say, in search results like this. So here we have uh, the, affiliation, uh, the affiliation, all the values that we have here, affiliation, job title, all of that is extracted by the Google parser. And Google can do... Uh, many things with that. So now there's like the next step after this. Instead of creating all those fields manually, why don't we uh, have a module that does that for us? We just pick a type, we pick a few properties from schema.org, and then we, we go ahead and we let Drupal do all the hard work for us. So instead of clicking add a content type like we normally do, we just say add a schema.org content type and this is the list of all the types available on schema.org. And here we will choose something sport related. So sports event. Just to make sure this exists here, that there is a sports event type on schema.org. This is the one we just pulled. Okay, so those are all the fields that we downloaded from schema.org. Those are all the options, all the fields we could choose to de decide to include in our new, brand new automatic content type. We're going to pick image, location. Here in the drop downs on the right, you can choose a different field type if you don't like the one we picked for you. Start date for an event, that makes sense. That's also in the list of the fields we want to create automatically for us, and there we go. So we have uh, all the fields here. Machine names, we used a little namespace in front here just to avoid any conflict with existing fields that you might have on your site already. All right, and then the RDF mappings are pre-filled already. So that was very quick. We, we built one new content type and a bunch of fields and just uh, 
a few seconds, I guess it was a bit longer here just to show you, but you have to do that every now and, you know, now and again. Very often it's, it's very quick to do it. All right, so everything is set. And then from there, everything is back to like what you've seen before. We can go and create a new sports event. Here, there's no difference. We're just going to use an example from Wikipedia. OK, I'm going to skip that part. Copy, paste. OK, the node is there. It's been created. And it's ready for indexing by Google. We can check that the markup is there. Exactly what we wanted. Type of schema, sports event. There you go. And all the fields. All right. And if we check on Google, just put our page. All right, gets updated. Uh, date is there and location, so we're good. Everything is picked up. All right. So that's the end of the first video. So I'll switch back to to you, Kevin, I believe. Yep. All right. So, um, so this this is all the results of you know a lot of really uh, hard work um, by both Stefan and 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 uh, Sacchini and. Um, you know, uh, we really, um, you, our, our goal was to make it as simple as possible. So we've really uh, made the process of, of, of entity creation much, much simpler, um, you, know, you know, in Drupal. And the, it, it, this way of, of, of being able to automatically download an entire entity and then, and then set it up is kind of what we were, we were striving for. And one of the key things about that is creating, as Stefan showed you, you know, the default field mappings. So that if you wanted to, you don't have to reconfigure anything. You can just go click, click, click these three fields and done. Um, because every field now has a default field mapping, which maps to pretty much an 80% use case of you know, what that field would, 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 would generally be used for. And it's this concept of, you know, uh, of going with the 80% use case and the same default and getting something into the site as rapidly as possible that makes this an accelerator for the site builder and, again, uh, gives them an incentive to do this even if they're not really necessarily interested in linked data or schema.org or any of that, although they should be. Um, so, uh, but what about the entire content model, right? We, what we'd really like to move to uh, is an entire, uh, you know, content model uh, template system. So this is an example site. You might have seen this in, in Dries's keynote. We used it for um, uh, a, uh, a music site, a sample music site. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sample content model that I've been using ex as an example for a while. So imagine you have this music review site with, um, you know, with music reviews, and it needs a music review content type, obviously, but then it also needs you know, a, a, a several other content types. So it needs all of these you know, like album review, concert, artist, venue, song, album, genre. And then, um, you know, in Drupal, obviously these, these all need to be, um, these all need to be, um, you know, different types of entities. So some of them are nodes and some of them are possibly going to be views. Some of them are going to be maybe even, a, you know, a media file or a, a taxonomy term. Uh, and you need to make, um, you know, what, again, are the sort of same default choices for, for, for what those things are, right? Now, to do this, um, you know, it requires really an immense amount of work to get all of this, all of this, this stuff done. And, um, you know, this is assuming, of course, this is assuming that you didn't use a, you know, a, a pre-created schema.org, um, you know, content type that you, that, that you um, imported. But even if you did, you still have to create all of the entity reference views, you still have to create and then configure all of those entity reference views. And then, you know, essentially, you know, link together all of these things and, and connect all of the dots to create this entire content model, right? And if we could make that simpler and, and go that even one step further, then we have even more of an accelerator for, for, for users, uh, for, for the site builders to come in and, and begin to create, you know, fully semantic um, content types. So this is this is not a good process right now, and we can and we can improve it, and in doing so, um, you know, uh, make it even simpler, and uh, and get those people uh, a better experience. Um, so part of this, uh, part of the idea behind this is um, is the content model as a feature. 
So if, uh, you know, if we do all of those things, right, uh, we, can, we can begin to, um, you know, take these schema.org linked content types and bundle them together uh, using features module. So, um, you know, I've, I've, whenever I mention features module, a lot of people say this. You know, um, this is actually a quote from the features uh, module um, project page on the, on, the, on the Drupal 8 version of features. Um, and uh, yet I hear this all the time. Why, why do we need it? You know, we have CMI now. But the, the original goal of features module was to uh, create features. <laughs> so this is what we're trying to do with it now. We want to create an actual feature, not just a bundle of configuration that I want to transfer from my dev to my stage to my prod uh, instance of my site. I want to actually make a feature that's shareable with other, with other people that I could put, put up on a feature server. Going back to that original dev seed kind of apps kind of idea that, that it's a real you know, a, s a single thing that, ha that, can be, that can be downloaded and installed it kind of in one click and run. Um, and, um, you know, as, a, as an accelerator for content, this makes a lot of sense because, you know, it, it, it's, it's more of a, you know, it's more of a, it's more of a template than a sort of a, than, than a thing that has business logic embedded in it or, or, or some particular industry vertical like a, a distribution would. We're talking about just the 80% use case content model for a sort of domain like music or uh, film or art or, you know, whatever this, the particular domain that you're talking about is that shares this sort of 80% use case content model. And out of this you can create a, a kind of a content package that's a feature that could be could possibly be hosted on a feature server and downloaded as a as as sort of one thing that people could start start from, right? So uh, features module in Drupal 8 has actually come quite a long way, and um, uh, I I'm not sure whether they have a beta release yet, but um, but they're um, but they're doing uh, a lot of work on it, and it's going to be. Uh, uh, really great. I believe it's going to have the ability actually to uh, to not that that you can download a feature and that you don't have to have uh, all of the dependencies on on the site and it can immediately run the feature without uh, without any further um, you know uh, downloading and installing of other modules. Um, so you know the future of this actually um, you know when we think about it. There's, there's, there's more really that we can do. There's more that we can do with content creation and, and, and adding to this whole sort of experience of, of you know, of allowing the, 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 the content model person, you know, the person who's creating these, these, uh, you know, these, these, these content models to, to not have to go through all of these steps. Because, you know, each, each one of these boxes here represents a new UI in Drupal that you had to go to. That's ridiculous. You should be able to do this in a single in a, in a single action or in a, in, a, in, a, in a simple kind of in a simple UI w w that allows you to do it all in one place. So when, if you look out on the web and you sort of search around on content models and you know content strategy and you know um, and, and and modeling tools and diagramming and, and and things like this, this kind of stuff has been around for a long time. Data, diagramming databases and entity relationships and there's a lot of different ways that people do it. But the overarching um, you know concept here. Uh, is that when I model my content, I can see the whole thing. I can see it at a 10,000 foot view. I can see all of these entities and how they relate to one another. But field UI in Drupal takes you through this process where it's like this, I go to this UI, I go to that UI, I go to the other UI, and there's no single place where you can create a mental model of your entire content um, you know, structure of your site so that you, can, so that you can really easily create these things. So one of the things that we're moving towards, one of the next projects that we're hoping to um, build um, is something that looks kind of like this. This is an initial sort of first pass design where you can see that um, it's bringing together, you know, a, a UI with a, um, you know, with a, with, with a content modeling tool so that you can literally grab these entities and then bring them in and then and, 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 and kind of drag and drop sort of you know, the, the connections between them and then determine whether that, that connection is going to be you know, a one-to-one, one-to-many, is this going to be um, you know, a child of, you know, all of the different kind of ways that you want to, um, you want to make these connections you know, um, uh, and the directionality of them. Um, uh, so, or I should say cardinality of them. 
I don't always get the uh, developer terms right. <laughs> but, um, you know, and then another thing, you know, that, uh, that we really, um, you know, uh, need to start to think about also building into this kind of a tool is a more automatic way of, 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 making, uh, of making these links to external APIs, right? So if I have my music, um, you know, uh, genre uh, list, sorry, I'm going to go back to... If I have my music genres, I could make that as a taxonomy. I could go in, uh, you know, have the people in my on my content team, you know, start typing in, you know, jazz, classical, pop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But why would I want to do that when I when I could go to, um, you know, a standardized um, API like this one, Echo Nest, for instance, that um, I can get a developer key to, and I can get and I and I can send you know, a, a, a REST call to them with REST in Drupal 8 that we have now, and I can make a call to this API and immediately go and get, um, based on artist, give me the genre, you know, or, or based on song, give me the genre, or based on, you know, a number of different criteria. So there's, there's lots of different get requests, you know, that I, can, that I can make, and I can just get that thing pulled directly into my site, into this, you know, into this piece of content. Now, you know, having those kind of things baked in, that's an even more powerful accelerator because now my taxonomy is not going to get stale and out of date. And, uh, and again, it's dry and it's, and, and it's, and it's um, create once published everywhere. I'm taking that genre from one place where, where somebody else is maintaining it. I'm offloading a maintenance task onto a, you know, a public API. And essentially, really, this is available for all of these things. So then my content model becomes much, much, much simpler to maintain in the long term because all I have to do, all my content creators have to do is create album reviews because that's what my site is all about. I'm getting my artists from ASCAP. I'm getting my albums from Spotify, my songs from Spotify, tickets from Ticketmaster, venues from Foursquare, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is true in any domain. There's, there's APIs springing up all the time that are serving up these kinds of um, you know, of enumerations and, uh, and, 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 and um, you, know, you know, bunches of content that you can, that you can suck into your site and really use. Um, so that's kind of where we see the, the future um, going with that. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the content creation side. Um, and this is, again, it's about the content author um, and getting into the, you know, into the WYSIWYG. So, you know, this is the person responsible for, you know, researching and writing the article. And, um, you know, they, don't, they want things to be automatic. You know, they, they don't want to have to think about it. And the other thing is that they don't want to be taken out of flow, right? So they want to, when they're, in, when they're in their editing experience and when they're actually typing, they don't want to have to go out of that browser window into another browser window, type something, start researching something, and then have to come back. Um, and if you look at a lot of the enterprise level um, tools that are out there, a lot of what these tools are doing is that they're bringing the research functions in context. They have search windows on the side where you can literally start, you know, typing things and researching or even having your, 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 um, your content parsed for entities, you know, that are, that, are, that are real things like Marlon Brando or, you know, Federico Fellini. That thing becomes uh, something that gets automatically parsed and, 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 and that you can link. So, Stefan is going to tell you a little bit about some of the background in this area, and then we, we also have uh, a video uh, to show on that. So about the background, the previous work that has happened in this field, really there isn't that much of it. A lot of the focus that we've uh, had in the past many years was about content model, not about the actual instance of your content. So in other words, we were able to tell Google that this taxonomy term is a place or a city. But that's really all we were able to say. We were able to say the name of the city is, say, London. Google might assume it's London in the UK, but really there's no way to tell the search engine that, no, it's not London in the UK, it's London, Ontario in Canada. So that's the problem, that's the challenge we're trying to address here. Uh, we haven't done a lot of work in that field. We, we can't map the instances of your nodes to a particular entity in the, in the real world. And that's because Google wasn't really, as far as I can tell, they were, they were not as interested in that. They were, in the past years, it has, ch it has changed over the last year or two with the knowledge, uh, knowledge graph announcement and then the weak Freebase acquisition of, by Google and then the Wikidata movement from the Wikimedia Foundation and Wikipedia people. So this aspect of 
annotating your content itself, not just what type of content it is, but what is it really? Uh, what if you have a name? It, you know, if it's about disambiguation. So the only thing we could find in the, in the past that has been done about this is this RDFA content editor. It's a WYSIWYG plugin for TinyMC where you can go and tag, annotate your strings. And that's really all there is to it that, um, in, in Drupal. So, so, um, so, but at the same time, there's some, in, there's been some interesting work going on, uh, you know, in other areas um, on the on the usability side of this, in terms of being able to, while you're in Flow, while you're in an, uh, a, you know, an editorial experience, to be able to, um, uh, that's not what I wanted to do, um, to be able to, uh, you know, get um, get into uh, a place where you can actually search. You know, for other things. Um, now, uh, yeah. Okay. So this is um, this is something from the MIT Media Lab. It's called MIT. Uh, it's called Fold. It's actually a it's actually an online magazine. So I'm in the actual content creation flow here, and um, you can see what I'm doing is I'm creating this little card where I start to type something, and then I can hit a plus button. I have this uh, tool over on the side where I can immediately search things. Uh, and add them to um, you know to my to my article right so i'm 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 writing an article on Bob Dylan, so I want to so at first I found a video and now I, I know that Bob Dylan was born in Duluth, so I'm going to link to the map of Duluth I'm going to link to um, immediately again put a map there I, I I can go on and I can do things like I can uh, you know then i then i I, I, I annotate that as his uh, as his birthplace. And then um, you know do other things like uh, you know search for images or or even uh, even uh, animated gifs. So you can see this last one is um, you know th there's all these uh, there's all these little animated gifs of Bob Dylan singing. So um, you know this is this is really fun and it's uh, it, it's a way for sort of searching for things and adding things to content in context without getting out of context. But it's not necessarily it's not necessarily semantic web. It's not really. I don't know whether all of these things that are being added are necessarily, um, you know, marked up with RDFA or whether they're really, they're, they're, they're really, um, you know, going to be discoverable apart from the fact that they, that, that, that uh, they're connected by, by, by virtue of being in the same piece of content. Um, but so it's, it's, it's like we have these two areas of, um, you know, of, of, of the linked data and the, and the user experience sort of moving towards one another and, and, we're, and we're trying to pull those things together. So what Stefan is going to show you next um, is, uh, yeah. So again, this is work that was done by the same student this year, this time. So here we're just going to enable a module called Link Data Tool. And what this module will allow you to do eventually to do eventually is to map a given node or a given term of your site to a particular ID from a well known authoritative bank of, of data or uh, thesaurus such as Wikipedia's uh, Wikidata or Google's Freebase, so that when Google comes across that page and, and sees that this is really the same entity as the one that I know already in my system, then Google or any search engine can map those two and say they are the same thing. And that's useful, again, for avoiding uh, ambiguity on, on the web. So here we're just creating a field Creating a new field uh, to uh, to our content type, and again I repeat this is Drupal 8. This is very uh, prototype level, and uh, but we're still working on it and polishing it. So we have the field now. It's just it works like a regular field, and when we create content, a new article, say about Drupal. 
I'm just going to fill, it up, fill up the form. Add a tag. So that's just a regular tags field, so don't, don't worry about that. But what's interesting is the last one here at the bottom. So you type Drupal, and it's, it does um, an autocomplete request to Freebase. And there is your tag. So note the ID here, Q1. And it's, it's already gone, but Q1 something. That's, that's the ID of the concept about Drupal in, in Wikidata. We, we support two providers of Tesori right now, Wikidata, which is the, the next generation Wikipedia, if you wish, uh, which is here. So here's the page about Drupal on Wikidata. And you see the, oops, the ID here. So that's really the end of that first uh, video. So this was about, again, to, to recap, this was about simply mapping a node or any entity on your site using a new field type to an ID on Freebase or Wikidata. So let's just put the green. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, so obviously, you know, the, 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 the experience is something that we're still sort of, sort of moving towards. Right now, we have, we have one field where you can, where you can map these things to, to the wiki data or to, to Freebase. But ideally, what we want to be able to do is, is have, uh, you know, sort of more, more of these search tools sort of built right in kind of alongside your, your editorial experience. So that's the next step, you know, with this tool is to, is to do things where, where, where the user can begin to, in, in, in a similar way to Fold, start to search for entities, um, you know, and then, and then actually and actually pull them into the into the content and add them things like videos, or um, you know, or audio or or, or, or whatever um, you know they may want to add to their sites, um, and 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 have content that is um, you know that is that is rich and actually richly and and properly linked to all of its canonical you know sources, um, and uh, you know when if you you know I've done a lot of um, you know talking to people in the publishing industry at. For instance, at, at, at Time Inc. And, uh, and and others, and this type of ability to sort of immediately be able to research and link and and and, and create these cross references uh, in your editorial experience is, is a highly sought after thing. So we're really kind of, you know, um, going going in the direction that the user sort of is driving us. Uh, and again, creating a, a, a an accelerator for, for for linked data by by making the user experience of creating content and doing research easier. Um, so, uh, so the future in this area, I, I think, is um, is very um, interesting because, you know, um, essentially, really, what we want to do is we we don't want to force authors to to mark things up, right? So, you know, uh, when we talk about getting into the body field, right? When we when we bring things like what we're talking about, uh, like this like this entity browser into the body field, where you know where a where an individual um, you know, entity in the middle of a paragraph. You know, sort of Marlon Brando is written in the middle of a paragraph. Uh, can be can be selected, and then that can be immediately linked to um, you know to to its uh, Wikidata source or Freebase source. That's that that's that's kind of um, a kind of automatic power that you want to, that you want to give to users. And if you look at you know Google Sheets, for instance, you can already do similar things to this with um, if you type a link. If you have a cell in a in a, in a Google spreadsheet and you and you type a link into the cell. If you type a name into the cell, it will pull up into the into the link uh, field. It will it will pull up the website that it thinks that you are trying to link to, and you and, and you can add that in. That's the kind of automatic, auto magical kind of functionality that you really want in these kind of situations. So that so that everything that the author needs to do to make their 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 content semantic sort of is kind of provided for them right right where they are. And, and indeed, all of the other tools of, of, of making the content semantic, like creating uh, sections and you know and citations and headings and et, et cetera, is also all um, you know kind of um, automatic. So this is some uh, uh, you know uh, work that we've been doing on uh, improving the authoring experience, and um, you know it's kind of trying to bring together these two worlds of sort of seamless, smooth, um, you know, uh, distraction-free editing. Like you might find in a, a tool like Medium, with, uh, with 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 semantic tools that surface themselves 
when you need them. So don't just give me sort of an, a, a, you know, a effortless authoring experience. Give me an effortless, effortless authoring experience that exposes the structure of what I'm doing so that I don't have to dive into the markup uh, or have the knowledge to dive into the markup to, to make that happen. And, uh, and if we can do that, if we can keep authors out of the markup, it makes the job of, 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 of site owners much easier because then we don't have to worry as much about things like filtering and, and all of the problems that we run into, uh, inline styles, et cetera, when, when authors are looking at the, uh, at the HTML view. So, um, you know, and ultimately going forward, you know, I believe that it really should be the responsibility of the CMS to, in a sense, interpret the intentions of the author, you know, so that if the author adds, uh, and you know, you see this in a lot of markdown system, if, systems, if the author types a one and then a period, that automatically becomes an ordered list. That's the kind of sort of automatic, you know, sort of interpretation of an, of a, of an author action as a key to what the semantic structure should be, right? And I, I believe that, you know, as we move forward, um, you know, we're going to get closer and closer to this ideal where, where what the author does, you know, is actually underneath the covers creating a semantic structure that, that makes sense out of, what, uh, out of what they're doing rather than having to sort of impose it later, you know, or have some other kind of structure to, you know, to impose that. And it's really kind of the smart CMS, which is, uh, you know, what we'd ultimately like to, uh, to move towards. So, um, you know, I, the, 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 the takeaways are kind of, um, you know, labor-saving tools um, uh, can, be, can be a catalyst for, for creating, uh, you know, this world of linked data that we, that we, you know, believe will really be powerful for everybody. And, um, you know, as, as long as these things can, can become kind of automatic, that, that, that people don't have to think about it, that that's the way that, uh, that this is going to gain traction. Um, and that we have the, the first level of tools, which you've seen, and um, soon, hopefully, with, uh, with some more, more time and effort, we're going to have some more powerful tools as well, um, you know, and, and, and this future of, of, you know, of, of a smarter CMS and a more, uh, you know, a, a more automatically semantic CMS. So, um, um, the last video? Oh, you have another video? Yeah. So we took a stab at what Kevin has just been describing, where instead of mapping a, a whole form, you can go in the body field and map each of your strings or concept to something that search engines will know. And I will just show this demo now. I didn't even know you had that video. <laughs> it was a surprise. Throwing things out of his hat. S surprise for the, I was just working on it here. No, I'm just <laughs> So again, uh, credits goes to Sachini from Sri Lanka for working on this during um, the last Google Summer of Code. And here we go. Um, so we have the, this is just the regular text format configuration interface that we have here. And you can see some buttons here. Those are two new buttons that we will add to the Drupal 8 core WYSIWYG interface. So one of them is for tagging a piece, a piece of string, and the other one is just to remove the link. So this is the way the UI works. You have a list of options, and you drag the, one, the ones you want to use in your WYSIWYG editor, and all the HTML tags will get updated automatically for you. So you save that. And then you can go and create the article of your choice. I'm just using some content here. This says uh, Jud Judgment of Paris. So this is just a, a text that I took from Wikipedia. But what's, <clears throat> what's interesting here is that I can highlight some strings and map them to Wikipedia. And it's actually automatically detecting the string and querying Freebase for the ID matching that string. So those are, those are, this story is picked up from the Greek mythology. And those are personalities from the, from the Greek mythology. So this is Paris. So this is actually a, 
uh, a concept of Paris in the Greek mythology, which is not the city. It's just a fictional character from a play. And here we could actually say when we type our text and when we annotate the string Paris that it's not the city that you might think of. It's, it's actually something completely different that you might not even, even know about. So we've tagged all our text here. We're just doing another one. This is Apple. So again, another interesting thing, thing here is Apple could mean anything, could mean a lot of things, sorry. And here it's the fruit, so we made sure that this piece of uh, text means the apple as the fruit. So we're going to save that node now. And those strings all appear as links. And as we will see sh shortly, th those links will go to Freebase. But let's first take a look at the WYSIWYG after, if you want to edit your node, you still have the same interface. So you, you can clearly see this is a linked data tool. And here in the markup, we have links to Freebase in the WYSIWYG source. So let's just go back and click on one of those links and see that it indeed brings us to Wicked, um, Freebase, sorry. So this is the page for Zeus on Freebase. And it has a link to Wikipedia that has more information. So this is all connected. Once you connect your, your body field and the pieces of your body field to those concepts, then people can all of a sudden jump in and learn more about it. Uh, you don't have to look for the link. You just type in or just select what concept you meant from the drop-down, and that's all. So that's the video. Uh, again, this is all Drupal 8. Uh, if you're interested in ha playing with this uh, approach in Drupal 7, there's actually uh, some work that has been done by some of the folks in the back of the room here from the Finnish broadcasting company. And um, it's called Yield, Y-I-L-D, on Drupal.org. And um, we just had a good meeting over lunch today to, just to agree on, a, on the next steps. Uh, they have a different approach. They're using taxonomy terms in Drupal 7. We're using a field in Drupal 8. But eventually, we want to merge and agree on, a, on the best approach. So we're just trying different things now. Um, so all of those, this session is really inspirational. It's not meant to be definitive, those wireframes are still kind of um, being worked on. So those are just ideas, and I guess we want your feedback on whether you think it's a good direction for the community to go towards, or if you think it's not the right direction, or if it's maybe completely useless, I don't know. <laughs> so I guess that's why we're opening for questions now, yeah, right? Yeah, so. any questions would be, would be welcome. And there's a, there's a mic over there. Do you have any other things that you built that I haven't seen? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, there's one question coming. Hello? Do, you, do you hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you, uh, if you said it, but I'm not sure if, if this is a uh, custom module or if this is already a part of, I don't know, core or whatever, um, especially the last two demos. So what is this, actually? It, it's already, it's, it's, everything is on Drupal.org. Um, so if you look for, it's, so the last one is a sandbox still, because it's very early. <clears throat> and if internet works well, we, we, we can put it up. Um, Not this one, sorry. What happened here? You got to type it again. Okay. So RDF UI is the first, the very first video that I showed in Drupal 8. Mm -hmm. It's here, and okay, there it is. Uh, the video is here if you want to watch it again. Sachini is the the maintainer. There shouldn't. Uh, that worked on this for uh, two, two years ago, two summers ago. And then the other module. If it loads. Yes, the other module is also on Drupal.org. It's a sandbox. Okay. Come on. 
but we can prepare the next question if you if you like. Um, I, okay. I have another one. Um, LD tool, that's is, where it is. Ah, link data tool. So okay, is it possible to integrate with some um, custom data endpoints, or and not only use Wikidata or mm -hmm. Freebase yeah. or whatever? So if you have your own vocabulary or your own thesauri internally, and actually the guys from uh, the Finnish broadcasting company have that use case, and they have their own ontology, I believe, and also uh, their own uh, Freebase-like system. So the the design of this module, the LD2 module, was made in such a way that you can uh, write your own plugin for your own endpoint for those, excuse me, for those uh, concepts. So you can definitely do that. Yes. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, a sort of related question. I was just wondering um, your views of microdata compared to RDFA. <laughs> the inevitable so, microdata. So that's that's very deep in the, in the weeds here. Um, it's the question is about which format to use. There's also JSON LD if you want to throw in and other formats and and also mi microformats also. So we are, really have four formats in HTML that we could use. Um, my take is not. I don't think it's a big deal, or I don't think it's something that people have, should have to worry about. In fact, in all the demos that I showed, you never had to know anything about this. Personally, I picked RDFA uh, since the beginning of Drupal 7, and it's still there in Drupal 8. And it's something that Google said they would support, just like JSON-LD and Microdata. So uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, uh, if you prefer one over the other. I just think that if you bring up JSON-LD in the conversation, JSON-LD is a bit different because it's, it's like a blurb of JSON at the top of your page. It's not linked to any DOM element of your page. It's not inline, dry. It doesn't follow the dry principle. Mm -hmm. And it has downsides when you have lots of fields with a lot of content in it. You end up duplicating your content at the top and loading your page. Mm -hmm. But it's not a, I don't think it's a big deal. It's easy to swap in and out uh, if, if, if we ever had to switch to another format, from uh, switch away from our DFA. Uh, in core, we only plan to support RDFA. Uh, in contrib, I'm sure there will be at least just an LD. So, yeah. But again, um, you know, I think ultimately what we want to what we want to be the case is for nobody ha to have to even know that. It's like it ju it just happens automatically in the background, um, you know. And the and the vast majority of Drupal developers uh, simply, you know, create you know, content models from content model templates and begin to immediately have, um, you know, linked data right away. So. Yeah. All right. If we don't have any more questions. Oh, there's one there. Nice. Sure. If you're loud enough, just yell. <laughs> 